Welcome to First Canada's FTC SIM tutorials. This series is about how to use FTC SIM, a first tech challenge robot simulator created by First Canada. So I haven't done one of these in a while, but there's uh, been a new entry into the variety of things that are now in FTC SIM. And if you didn't know, you can access FTC SIM by going to ftcsim.org slash FTC SIM. And you can create an account there. It's free. Uh, you can see a variety of things that are there. And the new thing that's been added is this FTC 2021, which is um, the actual field for this year. And a robot has been put in there that has an elevator <clears throat> and a grabber and the camera on it and a little motor with a wheel that will spin the carousel. So we're going to take a look at, at uh, that today. Um, so hopefully you're going to enjoy this, but I'm going to log in because I haven't already logged in. So I'm going to click up here and choose login. And <clears throat> if you're not aware of this, you, and you're creating your account for your first time, you have a couple of options. You can sign up as an individual, <clears throat> which is what I'm going to look at right here. But if you're a teacher and you want to use this in a class to teach coding with robots and with FTC robots, or you're a coach, uh, and you want to run this with your team as a preseason or a postseason kind of learning environment. Well, you can sign up as a teacher, put in your email address to sign up for free. All accounts are free. And then while you're in as a teacher, you can create logins and passwords for uh, your students or your team. And so they don't have to put in any personal information, which is uh, a great safety privacy feature. So here we go. <clears throat> so I'm going to log in. Oh, I've already done that. I'm going to log in. I don't need to make an account. And now you'll see that the landing screen is a little bit different because uh, the last five of these were kind of grayed out. You couldn't access them. But I'm going to go here and access this one. And uh, the one I want to actually look at today, normally I would go and do the first one. But uh, for reasons I'm not going to get into right now, I'm going to do the third one, which is the one that has all the camera abilities and, and so forth. So I'm going to go into that one. This is where I've started my stuff off. And I've created a couple of programs. I'm going to show you uh, the, <clears throat> the second one I created because I want to talk about this. Now, this particular series of tutorials is not about solving and playing the game. It's about learning how to use this robot to do some, some things that are unique to this FTC 2021 field as opposed to some of the other options like we have an FTC movement or FTC sensors or puzzles or FTC grabby because it's related to the the actual freight frenzy season. So here you can see we have a bunch of the elements and um, we only have one robot on because the robots are not playing each other in this. It's uh, learning some coding and again it would be all autonomous because we're not controlling the robot with any kind of device. And the first one we're going to look at today is to get this carousel spinning so that the rubber duck can fall and hit the floor and we can do something with that. So I've created the code over here already on the side and I'm just going to explain it a little bit and then demonstrate it. Uh, if you haven't done an FTC robot before, I, I'll tell you that one of the first things you'd have to do is to set one of the motors that drives the robot and it's the left one in this case to reverse so that it won't just spin in circles. So if I don't do that and I'll, and I'll uh, disable it right now so you can see it. I try to run this. Uh, it's going to just kind of spin. So we don't want that. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to do this. Now what I've done is it was kind of hard for me to see. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and this is going to I always have trouble with this so bear with me and I'm going to spin it around over here a little bit. So uh, if you did the FTC movement ones and you s started the motors up you'd see that the motors that are pushing the wheels, which are the back ones here, um, you could actually see those wheels spin. So that was kind of what I was hoping for with this one here, but you can't see that spin. So in order, uh, or this would have been a really short video out of showing you how to start it and get it to spin, but that is not the case. I can't tell that it's actually spinning when it's spinning. So the only way I could tell would be to get this robot to move over here and spin this carousel. So that's what I've done. So that's what my code does. So 
just to quickly go through it here, I'll just zoom back a little bit. So I reverse the left motor. And now I'm actually going to get the robot to spin in place. But actually, I want it to spin backwards. That's why you see um, um, we have one of the motors at a negative. So the this these two motors are going to go at 50% power. One is going to go forward at 50%, the left one. And the right one is going to go backwards. That will cause the robot to rotate in place, which is what I want. I'm going to do that for about uh, 800 milliseconds. So the robot will be turned backwards towards this thing here and then I'm going to drive it backwards which is what this says and you can see my remarks here as I back up towards carousel and I'm going to do that for a certain period of time and the period of time is less than a second and it's sort of trial and error because I, I I didn't really know how long it was going to take me and then I needed to spin it a little bit to get this to be very close to this so the carousel so it would spin it so that's what I'm doing, and I keep unfortunately zooming in and out because I keep forgetting to use this. And then what I'm going to do at that point is I'm going to stop driving, and I'm going to turn the uh, carousel on, and I'm going to go at half speed. So I'm going to demonstrate this, and then we'll take a quick look at uh, how this works. So here we go. I'm going to leave in the zoom in mode so you can see. There it is, and I turn it on. And there, at half speed, there you can see it's coming around, and then it hits the block that's there, and it falls. And there we go. So that's exactly what I wanted to show. So now I'm going to sort of demonstrate where I got some of this stuff. So the actuators are what controls our motors. So since I'm only using the motors, that's what's going to happen. So under DC motor, that's where I can see this set direction and I changed it from forward to reverse and then I dropped it in there so I'm going to drag it up there and get rid of it so you can see <clears throat> and then I wanted to get the motor going so I'm going to choose dual and it's going to give me that option and then I simply put in what I want and again a lot of it's trial and error you need to try this but if you put one in one after you've reversed the motor <clears throat> it'll go forward so it'll drive towards where this uh, the um, barcode is here uh, across the field and uh, I don't want that I want it to sort of spin in place so to get it to spin in place one of the ways to do that is to have them both motors go at the same speed but one forward one reverse which is what I've done there and just to, to see it go a little bit easier I've, I've put them at a half speed they don't need to be at half speed and through trial and error at that speed I figured out what I need to do now if I put them at one and negative one I would only have to go for half the time and of course I would change this to something like 400 so you can try that and see how it works so now I've got it backwards facing towards the duck and so I'm going to drive it backwards to get close to the carousel close enough that the the uh, carousel wheel will turn it and when I did that it took about 900 milliseconds there we go <clears throat> and then since the backward facing wasn't enough I actually had to turn a little bit I got the, the power from there. Now, in case you're wondering, where did I get these sleep things and what do they do? I got them up here from linear op mode right there. So you drag them in and then you can change them. The default value is always going to be one second. So that's never going to be enough uh, or that's not going to be correct. So we're always pretty much always going to have to change it. And I've now shown you a couple of ways to get rid of code. One was to drag it off to the right, off to the left here. And then another one was to throw it in the garbage can. So that's where I got it from. And I once I got one of them, I can just right click on it and duplicate and then put it in. So just to give you an idea. And then once I got it in the position I needed it to be in, then I'm going to turn the power off because I don't want it to keep driving. And then I'm going to get and set the carousel power to 50% and get it to spin. And again, a lot of this was trial and error because sometimes it didn't quite get far enough to touch the carousel with the wheel. I have to do that. So where is this one? Where is this? Do I get that? So if I go to DC motor, I'm going to see, oh, it's got this set drive left. But you say, oh, I don't need that. Well, it's got a little drop down here. And the little drop down will allow you to choose from the various motors you have. So you got actually have four motors. One that drives the left wheel, one that drives the right wheel, one that moves the crane, the elevator up and down, and one <clears throat> that spins the wheel, that spins the carousel. Now, uh, we also can take this uh, grabber and open it and close it but that actually is a servo and so we'll look at that in another video so I'm going to drag that off to the side the one thing I didn't use was this loop 
Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm just going to drag it off the side. It gives me a little bit more space. But that's how I've done it. And you can definitely see that it works because it spins it. And here it comes. I guess I should have sped that up a little bit when I did this so you can see. But that's how it works. Now, hopefully that's going to help you play the game a little bit here. Um, but there were certainly other ways you could have done that. I could have used the encoders that are built in the motors to get it to that point. Um, but I decided to keep it a little bit simple in this video and do it with this, uh, with the sleep, let it go for a certain amount of time. So I didn't mention it, but what I should tell you is that what the sleep does is it pauses execution of the program. It doesn't stop the motors from going. It just stops for, uh, the program from going to the next block. And the next block here, you can see where I am, is to take it and drive it backwards. So I want it to spin for 800 milliseconds, but turning it on to spin and then stay here for 800 milliseconds and then go to the next command. Stay here for 900 milliseconds and then go to the next command and so on. I hope that helps. I hope you enjoy this. If you do, uh, let us know. You can contact me at pkeenan at firstinspires.org. And if you have other solutions, I would love to see them. So thank you very much. And hopefully you're enjoying this and all of the stuff that we do with ftcsim.org.